Hi, I'm Brian Chu with the Underwater Photography Guide. In this video, I want to talk about culling photos, the first step to most people's Lightroom workflow. As you may be aware, this process can range anywhere from being mildly time-consuming up to being mind-numbingly boring, painful, and uh, excruciatingly long. I've broken this video down into seven tips for culling your photos. The first tip is the most important, and it's quality over quantity. To illustrate this principle, I'm going to show you the album from uh, the first underwater photography workshop I took, which was a few years ago, and compare that to one of my most recent albums. So the first one is from the Sea of Cortez, um, and it's a big album with 131 photos. Okay, so you know as you as you look through, you'll see ah, there's a fair amount of kind of duplicate subjects, um, and then we get to the sea lions, and there is just a huge amount of sea lion photos. You can see tons. Um, and then again, some more uh, duplicate subjects. And, uh, and so when you look at this album, it's very easy to miss out on the really great shots because there's just so many uh, photos, especially of the sea lions. So now let's compare that to uh, a recent album of mine from uh, shooting some sea dragons at Rapid Bay in Australia. And uh, in this case, uh, now it was less dives, uh, but it's still quite a bit of shooting, and uh, I ended up with an album of just 23 photos. There's still a decent amount of sea dragons, but you can see they're all different backgrounds, different subjects, um, that kind of thing. And uh, this album just much more succinct, and it really highlights just the really great shots. And I really worked hard to trim off anything that wasn't um, high caliber. So for me, this Sea Dragon album uh, has a lot more impact than the Sea of Cortez one. Uh, if someone shared this with me, I would look through it and check out all the photos. Whereas uh, going back to this one, um, it's going to cause me to skim and I'll probably miss some of the best shots. When it comes to being ruthless with culling photos, it's easier said than done. Most of the photos you have took a lot of work and each of them has some sort of context or story and it leaves you with an emotional connection. Of course, people that weren't there or weren't involved don't have that connection. And so even though all these photos might seem important to you, it just lessens the impact um, of your really good ones. Tip number two is to rate or reject every photo. I've put together a demonstration Lightroom catalog with some shots of nudibranch and some shots of dolphins to show this process of rating and rejecting. So I just go through each photo one by one and if I feel it's a keeper or potential keeper I'll rate it on a scale of one to five. If it's definitely no good, it's just not a very good shot or, or maybe it's overexposed or it's blurry or out of focus, anything like that, then I'll reject it. Um, let's just jump in. So the first shot, I think this is a four, so I just hit the four key and that gives it a rating of four stars. Uh, this next one, that's more like a two, and uh, this is probably more of a two. Um, this one's just really not that great, I'm going to reject it, so I hit X to reject it. Um, I'm going to give this one a, a two, and I'm going to reject this one, and so on. And I, I go through this process through um, all of my images as my first round. At this point, it's best to not overthink your rating, so uh, just go with your gut and move fairly quickly through your photos. Let's move on to tip number three, which is to reject uh, most or all one star and two star photos. Let's return back to the uh, example Lightroom catalog. So now I've uh, gone through my first pass, I've either rejected or rated every photo I have from one to five. Now, I want to filter all the photos I rated, just one star and two stars. So here in the bottom right, you can see there's uh, five star icons. And what I'm going to do is click on two, and then I'm going to click on this uh, greater than sign and say, rating is less than or equal to. So now I'm pulling up all photos that are rated two or less. Okay, and uh, in this case, I have lots of other photos of dolphins and nudibranchs. So I'm just going to go through and reject all my ones and twos. Now I've completed my first pass. I've uh, rejected 16 out of 35, so pretty close to half of my original photos, so that's great. And uh, I like to clean up the catalog, so I go over to the photo menu and uh, go down to delete rejected photos. So when I click on that, 
it lets me either delete from disk or remove. If I hit delete from disk, it will remove all these uh, rejected photos from the catalog and also delete them from my hard drive. Or if I hit remove, it just takes them out of the uh, catalog but keeps them on the hard drive. I want the extra space in my hard drive, so I delete from disk. So let's move on to the next tip, which is use survey view to trim shots by subject. Going back to the, my example catalog, I've got 19 photos that are rated 3 stars or above. It's pretty easy in this case because there's only a couple subjects, but even if you have more, you can use the same process. So for my nudibranchs, I'm going to hold down control, click on each of them to select, and then I'm going to go into survey view by pressing the N key. Now I can see uh, in one view all the shots I have of the nudibranch. So I like this first one. Uh, here I can see, okay, these these ones are all very similar, so um, I like this one the best, the one I rated four. So these threes that are a similar view, I hit X to reject, and then the X removes them from the view. So you can see as I do this, Lightroom automatically zooms in on the remaining photos. So now I'm down to four. I'd like to get to two, maybe three if possible. And uh, just looking at these, I mean, I like this shot, but it's a bit cut off, so that's an X. And out of these two, they're very similar, but this one uh, shows the gills and the uh, rhinophores a bit more nicely. So that's gone. And, and just as easy as that, I'm down to my two best nudibranch shots. I'll do the same thing with the dolphins, but uh, I guess we don't need to demonstrate it here. Tip number five is get help from a friend. A lot of the time, I find that uh, I, I've whittled things down to maybe five shots or six shots of a subject and I want to get down to two or three, but it, it's difficult for me to do those final cuts. So I'll, I just enlist uh, the help of my fiance and I find that in a few minutes um, we can blast through all the different photos I was stuck on and, and trim down to a really nice uh, small number and that's, that's because uh, she doesn't have that same emotional connection to the photos that I have, so it's very easy for her to be objective and to just pick which one is objectively a better photo. And just note, uh, they don't need to be an underwater photographer. Um, it can actually be better if they're not in some cases. So that brings us to tip number six, which is go through as a whole album and determine if there's any last few photos that are weaker than the rest that you want to cut. For this example, I'm going to use a, a recent album of mine, so it makes more sense. So to look at the album holistically, I need to be in library view and uh, I just select over here grid or I press G. So now I'm in grid view and I can see an overview of all the photos in my album. So just looking at this one last time, overall I'm pretty happy, but uh, I figure maybe some of these photos, like these gills, and this nudie, And this close up are uh, diluting things a bit too much. So I get rid of those as my final check. And now when I look through everything, I'm quite happy with the uh, overall quality. So overall, I'm quite happy. For me, uh, I'm finished calling now and I can edit these photos. This brings us to the final tip, which is keep your recycle bin around until you're done. As you go through the process of editing your photos, you may find that some of the ones you thought were really good actually have a flaw and you might need to retrieve some of the ones you've called. So just keep your recycle bin around so you can restore those photos. Once you're done editing, then you can just get rid of them for good. So that was our video about time-saving tips for culling photos. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, maybe found something useful to help you reap the rewards of having to edit, store, process, and share less photos. Thanks for watching.